The Ebola outbreak has conjured up a global response that is trying to stop it in its tracks. Now, Britain will start enhanced screening of passengers arriving from West Africa at two London airports and the Eurostar train station, while a suspected Ebola death of a British man is reported in Macedonia. Macedonian hospital officials say those who brought him to the hospital are in isolation and his Kopje hotel has been sealed off. It is unclear if the man was in Africa before heading to Macedonia. A nursing assistant in Madrid is said to be gravely ill after treating two Spanish missionaries for Ebola. At an Ebola meeting at the World Bank in Washington Thursday, officials called for more aid funding coupled with a green prognosis if the epidemic is not stopped. Let me be clear, cases are growing exponentially. We need at least, as I said, 20-fold surge in assistance. Mobile laboratories, vehicles, helicopters, protective equipment. The first contingent of 4,000 U.S. troops have arrived in Liberia with equipment to begin building medical centers in the epicenter of the Ebola outbreak. Officials say a stepped-up global response is necessary to match the rapid spread of the disease. Ladies and gentlemen, unless we quickly contain and stop the Ebola epidemic, uh, nothing less than the future of not only West Africa, but perhaps even Africa, is at stake. The 30 years I've been working in public health, the only thing like this has been AIDS. And we have to work now so that this is not the world's next AIDS. Ebola has killed about 3,900 people in West Africa and has appeared in several other countries, including the United States and Spain. The United States will begin screening travelers from Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone at New York City's JFK Airport Saturday. Screening starts at four other airports next week, including Dallas outside Washington. Sense of what an international traveler encounters in the current state of Ebola fear. I'm joined by Ine Thompson, who is also from Channels TV. Ine, welcome to Washington and Thank to you. Africa 54. Thank you so much, Vincent. Yes, now you traveled recently from Nigeria and came to join us here for some time. Uh, just keep, take us through briefly the process. What did you en encounter on the way up to uh, your destination here in Washington, D.C.? Well, yeah, thank you. Well, um, like Cynthia said, um, in Nigeria, you know, there's no case, but everybody's being careful. So at the airport, they test your temperature. And um, I encountered it in two places. The first place, you know, even before you start the processing, you know, you go to the airline or anything, your temperature is tested. You're given a form to fill where you're asked questions about your past travels and everything. And then it's written there, whatever your temperature is written there. and. Um, after you have passed through that, just when you are about to board in, your temperature is tested again, just in case, you know, exactly. you escape yeah. the first one. Yeah. Um, that was in Nigeria, you know, on the Nigerian front. And um, when I got into America, I stopped at, my first stop was at Atlanta. Yeah. And of course, I met with the immigration and all that. I guess it's tighter now, but, but then um, I just had some questions. So where are you coming from? Have you been in touch with anybody who is ill, you know, and all that? And you know the immigration guys, they have a way of looking straight into your eyes, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know something like that. So that's, that was basically yeah. it, my own experience. Yeah. You know, uh, very I quickly, uh, back home, you, you shared with me some experience about how this has kind of come into the interaction and in, kind of changed the way people are interacting socially. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, you know, um, we're very religious people, mm. you know, so when the outbreak came, um, there was also the religious part of it. People didn't just um, uh, keep to the health part, which is very important because you, you see everywhere the, the, the sanitizer, hand sanitizer. I mean, you go into supermarket, you want to buy hand sanitizer and tell you it's out of stock because a lot of people suddenly wake up, oh, I need to use a hand sanitizer, and there's water in banks, you wash your hand with a chemical and water before you go in and all that. Now, we also had the religious parts, you know. In churches, mostly pastors will tell you, oh, um, give a high five to your neighbor and say, oh, God bless you or something like that. That sort of changed. No you know, high yes. five. Yeah, okay. you, you just do it in the air yeah. <laughs> to be on the safer side. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. yes, we all want to be safe, and, you know, we'll have... Um, moments to share a little uh, much more of your experiences. Uh, thanks a lot, Ine, for Thank you so sharing much, this with us. Well, Ine Thompson is also a journalist from Channels TV in Lagos.